Hello everyone, my name is Jaime Antonio Guerra. This is my third and final update regarding my research at Texas A&M University. I'm a mechanical engineering major from the University of Texas Rio Grande Valley and this work was supported by the online REU program at Texas A&M University, Department of Energy, National Nuclear Security Administration under award number BE-NA 0003857. My mentors, Swan Zhao, a graduate student from Texas A&M University, and Dr. Hong Liang, who is a mechanical engineering professor at Texas A&M University. Now, before I proceed, I also want to emphasize the main goal of my research, which is to perform quantum chemical calculations for different lignin structures in the hopes that we can redesign and better the technology of supercapacitors. And this lignin polymer can be utilized as a high performance, lightweight electron material for supercapacitor applications. Here is my progress. So far, I practice using Linux and Gaussian softwares by watching and attending online tutorials and lectures provided to me by the HPRC staff. Then I created simple molecular structures and performed the quantum chemical calculations for those structures. I analyzed the optimization results, including the vibrations and stabilities of lignin monomer structures, such as sinopal alcohol, coniferal alcohol, and paracamero alcohol. These monomers are present in alkaline lignin, dealkaline lignin, lignosulfonate, and craft lignin. Here is what those three monomers look like. This is sinopal alcohol, coniferal alcohol, and paracamero alcohol. Recently, I have built, optimized, and calculated these seven linkage structures of lignin. These were the steps I took when building the structures. The first step I did was I redrew the seven linkages on a piece of paper. This was very helpful for me because it assisted me in converting a 2D structure into a 3D structure on Gaussian. It also helps with accuracy and building your structure right the first time. After you finish building your model of your 3D structure on Gaussian, it is important to inspect your structure and make sure that the bond lengths and the bond angles are accurate. Then you will continue and perform the quantum chemical calculations for all the linkages and periodically monitor the stream output files of the jobs. This is important to make sure that you don't receive any errors in the process. Also, it's important to know how many valences you should have for each atom. For example, carbon atoms can only have four valences, oxygen must have two valences, and hydrogens must only have one valence. So as I've mentioned, accuracy is key in Gaussian. It can be very inconvenient when you perform a five hour job and within three hours of processing, you receive an error and your pretty much your file just gets terminated and you gotta redo it all over again. I would like to briefly demonstrate what a successful Gaussian termination looks like. So on this side, we can see it reads normal termination of Gaussian and it gives you the date and time. This signifies that your information and your bond lengths and bond angles was accurate and that your calculation was deemed successful. Here on the right side of the output file stream, we can see that the script does not conclude with the message of normal termination of Gaussian. That symbolizes that somewhere in your structure there was an inaccuracy which needs to be addressed and therefore that inaccuracy caused the molecular simulation to terminate prematurely. For this presentation, we'll review my results for beta 04.
and as we can see in the general overview, this simulation took approximately 3 hours and 35 minutes to complete. If we compare the model alongside with the picture, we can see the beta O4 linkage joins the two part of the molecules. Here we can see the total energy of the optimization in its phase cycle. As we see here in this graph displaying the maximum internal forces, we can see a scattery effect in the initial of the structure until phase 20 starts to gain stability. And you can visualize the lack of stability in its first few phases. So as we compare and review the graph along with the model, we start to see a pattern within the dislocation and the instability of the structure. And this is our main interest. If a linkage breaks down easily, it means it leads to faster degradation of lignin, which in consequence, it may not process a long cycle stability due to material degradation. Now let's just say that we analyze the material that has a linkage that is difficult to break. This signifies structural stability for the materials which translates to prolonged cycle life of the supercapacitor. Here we have the quantum chemistry dynamics in terms of vibrations and frequencies. We can also see here the infrared spectrum, which is essentially the interaction of infrared radiation with matter by absorption, emissions, or reflections. Now let's take a look at some of the motions within the molecules and the bonds. As you can see, the energies within the molecules are causing them to move. The vectorization symbolizes the direction of each motion phase. The more deeper we get, the more we see the entire structure moving simultaneously. Conclusions. During this program, I researched the utilization of the lignin material and its versatile properties and potential use in supercapacitors. I was able to successfully build and perform chemical calculations at the quantum level with the help of Texas A&M supercomputers. And I can conclude that understanding lignin linkages, bond disassociation energy is the key to uncovering the redox reactions that happen in lignin. So redox reactions are basically reactions in which one atom is reduced and one is oxidized. And these reactions determine the pseudocapacitance property of the lignin structure. And once we fully understand the lignin linkages bond disassociation energy, we can then begin to manipulate the chemical structure of these lignin linkages to prolong their life and make them more efficient and stronger for the lignin-based supercapacitors. And this will conclude my third and final presentation for my research at Texas A&M University.